First of all, you don't know me. <laughs> We're all about that high school drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl, drama girl. cheering for the right team. Drama queens, drama queens, smart girl, rough girl, fashion but you're tough girl, you could sit with us girl. Drama queens, drama queens, drama queens, drama, drama queens, drama queens. Hey, 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 everybody. <laughs> I feel hey, like there's hey. a song in there somewhere. Yeah, sing um, it. Welcome back. Uh, we, are, we are into a Q&A episode for you guys. Super stoked. We have some really fun fan questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, let's, let's get into it. I like this wait, first one. Wait, wait, before you ask a question. No, I have a question for you because you oh. just got my brain going. Can you take that hey, hey moment you just had and like maybe take it into the studio with your band and... Make something for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just need to loop it. We'll just get it on. Yeah, a, right. Put it on a rhythm and loop it. I'm like, hey, you're doing this hey, big hey, band hey, project. Hey. Like, can we? Can we make requests? Is that yeah. like when you make a it's request to a in. DJ? Do not be surprised when I send you a country song with "Hey, hey, 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 hey." Who was the, the singer that just sampled the Muppets? It's all my kids listen to. What? Wait, really? Yeah. That, it's like, what is her name? Ficka Twigs. Is that how you say it? <laughs> F- okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, she's got this like. Oh my god! Did not do it for you, Kermy. And my kids are singing it, and I'm like, "Are you, are you Miss Piggy right now?" Yeah, Joy, sample this. That's that's like the Muppets. I'll be your Muppet. Yeah, why not? Well, if I especially if I get somebody who does a Muppet voice to maybe do it in the background. Yeah, Yeah, like a Kermit. Hey, hey, hey. We're really off the rails now, guys. We've really we've really gone and taken a left, but I like it. Fick a twig. All right, take it away with the first question yes. that actually has to do with this show and not the record we're harassing you to write for Kermy. us. me. Hillary, go, read it. Okay, uh, for any teenager watching the show today, what is the main thing you would like them to take away from it? Mm. I love that question. Yeah. That's a good one. I think it's like sim- simplicity works. Yeah. In your mm. life. In creativity and material, that it, there's nothing wrong with complexity, and there was certainly emotional complexity. But like, you can enjoy your life without all the electronics. You can you can feel all your feelings without needing to send everything through a text message. Sometimes talking to somebody in person is the best thing to do. Mm-hmm. I just feel like this, there's a simplicity about our show in comparison to the way teenagers are living their lives right now with all the technology that I just would love for them to embrace a little bit more mm-hmm. of, maybe. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You know what else for me really comes up is communication. Because when things go unsaid, your brain will fill in the gaps. 100%. And the best relationships on our show, the relationships that people have come to us for years and said, I want a friendship like that. Those come from communication. But I like what you added in there, Joy. Like sometimes you just got to give it a beat. Like if you're going to be friends with people for 20 or 30 or 40 years, like sometimes everybody just needs a second. Give people yeah. a beat, love them, and then talk to them. You know, stick stick with it. I think I think all of that is really important. And I think our show modeled that really well. Yeah. Sometimes we modeled crazy things like dog hearts, but sometimes <laughs> we modeled communication. The communication is so right. Like I tell Maria this all the time because we I got her an iPad and I don't she still doesn't have a phone, but I have rules around the iPad and one of them is you are not allowed to have like uh, meaningful conversations via text right now. When you're older, maybe you can figure it out. But I mean, I still struggle with that. But, But for her age, like to train her brain to start having like, emotional conversations on a, on text, which happens. Like she'll get these messages from other girls. Like, why did you say that in class? And what, you know, who, blah, blah. And I'm like, just babe, just mm-hmm. say, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Show up at school and talk to them face to face. Cause it's just so much better. And I love that we did that. We did that. We got bad at it mm-hmm. later in mm-hmm. life as humans. I would say the reason the characters on our show had such rich lives, like they're fun to watch, right? It's fun mm-hmm. to live through them because they got involved. You know, Brooke Davis yeah. was throwing prom and doing the, you know, designated driving thing. Haley. Yeah, they cared. Like, joins the cheerleading squad, right? It's yeah. out of her comfort zone, mm-hmm. but she joins. Lucas Scott gets off of that river court and like 
joins in the school. Peyton mm-hmm. doesn't have a place and so launches this all ages thing at Trick. You know, getting involved. And thud. She's, and thud mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, getting involved is something that I think uh, COVID really messed up for a yeah. lot of kids because it was like there wasn't that natural passing of the baton. And so it's almost like you just got to jump in. And even if it's a club mm-hmm. that you don't know if you're going to love it or not, like join that Spanish club, honey, go do <laughs> students against drunk driving, you know, like join mm-hmm. the yeah. thing. Um, but just That's join. That's an astute observation. There's th- the fact that COVID messed that up. I never thought about that, but I think you're right. I think there's a lot of kids that never got that sort of passed down to them because that two that year gap. gap. Yeah. It was weird. Yeah. Get in there. All right. You know what I think about a lot? I think about how crazy it is that, you know, and, and you read, you, you learn about this in school, right? They say history repeats itself around every hundred years. And I don't know if you guys have thought about this, but thinking back to, you know, the big flu pandemic of 1918, mm-hmm. and you see all the people isolated and, you know, in their masks and all the black and white photos. And I just think like, oh man, it's been so hard for us, to your point, to not be able to gather, and especially for kids. And then I'm like, what did they do when they couldn't FaceTime? Yeah. You know, <laughs> what did they do when they couldn't be in school on Zoom? Like, yeah. damn. And it makes me wonder, I, I've never thought about this. Were were there schools running drama clubs on Zoom? Were, were kids able to have any version of that? I don't know the answer, but... He, yes, there were. I love the desire to be resilient and the desire to figure out how to gather and my hope hearing your observation is that kids who got out of that practice who do as you said joy feel a little more comfortable maybe on an ipad than they do in person i hope their parents are also pushing them to get back together in person yeah now because they can and and to to join the extra club to do the the, the after school extracurricular thing that you know is back on this year because I think we're so lucky to be more connected than ever, but I I also think nothing replaces face to face time yeah. with your people and with your peers, and and that I think is where you learn to communicate like that. It is where you learn to be inspired by, you know, some group activity. The puppy pile. Remember being in school and just <laughs> puppy piling with your friends? I oh. still puppy pile. It's my dream Girl, situation. We know. I love that you still do it. <laughs> <laughs> Maria does. I love pulling up to school and watching her. All her friends are all climbing all over each other. Yeah. Oh, that's so yeah. good. Cute. Yeah. That was a good question. Well, okay, yeah. listen, if you had a theme song that played every time your character walked into a room, Ooh. what would it be? I mean, I know theme what mine song. is. <laughs> what? It's kind what of an it? obscure song. This is an obscure song. When we were filming One Tree Hill, this biopic um, documentary about Harry Nilsson came out and he has written like so many songs you've heard. You just don't know that he's who wrote them. Mm. And he has this song that's like, you're breaking my heart. You're breaking my heart. So fuck you. And I just <laughs> feel like that is Peyton Sawyer. Like it's obscure. It's like acknowledging yeah. that I'm dying inside. And also like, eh, hey, God, that's that it. That is so funny. I, I don't think I've ever thought of this before, but when you read the question, these boots were made for walking oh, popped yeah. in my head. Yeah. And then I was like, why am I thinking about that for Brooke? And then I was like, honestly, it's not, not a no. A little Nancy Sinatra. Yeah, yeah, just like a little sassy lady. She's American royalty. Okay. I'm into it. Okay. Please. <laughs> I love it. I'm I'm probably going to stick with, I think I said Casey Musgraves last time and she mm-hmm. came to mind again for that reason, but I think I'm going to say cup of tea. Okay. I, 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 when I think of Haley, she was so confident, you know, even though she had kind of some neurotic insecurities, there was a confidence about her that was like, I know I'm not everybody's cup of tea. Like, it's okay. You know, we're not, we're not all gonna, you're not, you're not always gonna like me and I'm not always gonna like you, but she was confident in who she was. Yeah. And I like that. I think it's cool. Mm. Yeah, man. All right. We're, we're printing a mixtape together. Hold on. Do we have a, any other characters <laughs> that we have songs for? Let's see. What would the Nathan Scott song be? Oh yeah. Mm. Oh gosh. I feel like he's so like something so classic, like Tom Petty or Bruce Springsteen, like okay. just such 
I don't know. You yeah. know what I mean? That's what comes to mind for me immediately is that era and those sounds. Yeah, I mean, I think of the marriage between Haley and Nathan, and I think of that Eric Church song, Wrecking Ball. Do you know <laughs> what I'm talking about? That song's so perverted, but it's like a husband and wife like hookup song. <laughs> you guys has great hookup energy. Oh, joy. Put that on. Okay, I'm putting it on my list. I wish I had a better answer for that. I feel like there's... There's so my brain goes totally blank when somebody says think of a song. All I can ever I think of is it's like Happy I can't birthday. think of a single record I've ever listened to. No, <laughs> there's got to be way better songs for Haley and Nathan. Lucas is definitely like a Born in the USA Springsteen kind of a song, right? Because isn't he so like he's just so literary? Like, bones. what's a good yeah? Wasn't that a Bukowski poem that Sheryl Crow turned into Santa Monica Boulevard? Wasn't that like a Bukowski poem? Oh, was it? I think yeah. So. I feel like yeah. I feel like he needs something that that references yeah, literature or like, yeah. Right. <laughs> Especially because he did his character did all the voiceovers of literature and read, you know, sections of books and poems and things. I'd love to find him a, an anthem that has a little, a mm-hmm. little classic writing. In totally. It. Wait, Hillary, don't you think, for Peyton, it would be just a girl from No Doubt in the 90s. Oh, so <laughs> Peyton's good. such a bitch. Doesn't Peyton say like a mean Gwen, Gwen Stefani comment in the show? <gasps> Does she? I don't know. I think she said Maybe something right. shitty about Gwen Stefani like season one. Just like, oh, that's basic. Huh. Like, <laughs> it's what? so lame. Love me some Gwen. I know. She's love a cutie. It. She's um, amazing. But, Pey- but like, I love that Peyton is like, no, everybody likes No Doubt. So I don't. I won't. My, oh, my <laughs> God. My son has a friend like that. That's like, we hate Weezer. I'm like, it says you. Weezer's yeah. awesome. Watch um, your mouth, young man. We should. <laughs> Kick it to the audience for Dan Scott. Like, I want to hear from the audience <gasps> yes. what they think Dan Scott's theme song is. Our bad boy. Mm. Maybe Nathan's would be, he's so fun. Oh, yeah. Wish he were mine. Wouldn't that be cute every time he walked in the room? It would get annoying after yeah, a while. Yeah, he's adorable. All right, number three. What's the last book you read? Ooh. Well, <laughs> um, you're reading all the time, Hillary. Tell constantly. Us. I read Mystic Christianity. Uh, it's a book that was written in 1908. And it was a critique of American Christianity at the time mm-hmm. and about just all the shit they make up that's not actually mm-hmm. in the Bible. And it talked about like things that I had never considered, like who are the wise men? Like, really think about that for a right. second. Who in, who who bankrolled Jesus so he could escape, you know, mm-hmm. King Herod? And so it's stuff like that. Um, it's, you know, it's a lot of New Testament philosophy. Mm-hmm. And it's a really fun beach read, kids. <laughs> it's a great time. I have a book that is, it's funny. I finished a book last night and then started a new one today. And the next book in my stack based on what you just said you need to read it's called jesus and john wayne and it's about the marriage of like the deep toxicity of the evangelical church and toxic american masculinity yeah and how it's completely missed it's been so what faith is about and what being a man is about and it's oof like the back of the book jacket gave me chills so i'm excited to get there but i just finished the most beautiful book uh, it's a, it's really amusing on girlhood and growing up and mm-hmm. grief and loss and love and all these things. It's called The Paper Palace. Oh, I heard about that one. Oh, my God. It's so, so stunning. I could not put it down. Um, so I stayed up late to finish it last night. And then today I started um, Cole Arthur Riley, who runs Black Liturgies wrote a book called This Here Flesh that I'm reading. And it's it's really about the liberation of the systems we were raised in and how it's actually our community uh, that gets us there and all of the stories that make us. And so sensing sensing themes. You keep a book in every love, room in your house. She's like, this is everywhere. my kitchen book. This is my Three bedroom book. At the book. same time. <laughs> yeah, I, I, in the same way that I want to pile with my people, I want to just be under a pile of books at all times. Uh-huh. I feel that for you. Joy, what are you reading? 
I just finished All the Light We Cannot See. Oh, cool. Which was so beautiful. Um, I'm in a little neighborhood book club, so that was <gasps> on our list. That's fun. And yeah, it's a beautiful um, telling of a little blind girl in World War II. And uh, she's in Germany. And there's a boy that she befriends who gets uh, recruited into the Nazi army. And it's just like really putting on glasses to look at how things might have felt from the other side and, and what it looks like to, to be confronted with ideas that you don't agree with, but you go along with it anyway, because um, it's just too scary to say, I, I don't believe that. Um, and, and then what, how this little girl survives, there's, it's, it goes back and forth between the two stories and then how this little girl survives and actually thrives, even though everything around her is falling apart, she can hear it, but she can't see it. And so she's got this whole world constructed in her mind, um, that she lives in. And Mm. it's just, it's really beautiful. When did that come out? Is that new? Um, I feel like it was maybe 14 or 16. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, and then the, the audio book I'm, I'm halfway through right now is uh, Lessons in Biology, or sorry, Lessons in Chemistry, um, which is also great. And it's about a, a female uh, chemist in the 1960s and just all the crazy shit that happens to her. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> but it's yeah. so well written. I have to imagine that was a weird scene. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to yeah, infiltrate it's, this it's really boys club. Yeah. But she, well, she turns her chemistry knowledge because they just won't let her climb the ranks and do what she's capable of doing. So she turns it into cooking and be, like becomes this host of a cooking show in America. But then <laughs> they flash back to this whole story of her life. And it's great. Sweet. Yeah, so wow. I recommend. I recommend. Mm. Great question. I love it. Okay. We have looking back. Do you think there was something your character did or said that was ahead of its time? Well, mm. Mm. <laughs> not really. I mean, I still stand by the fact that Brooke Davis invented Uber. That's that feels true. Ahead of its time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> feels ahead of its time. God. You know, th- the guy that like eventually opened that company, he watched our show in college. I bet money on it. He sat there and cried with all the rest Absolutely. of the kids. Absolutely. You just cry. Um, Peyton ahead of her time. I don't know, man. I mean, I feel like I feel like it was true to my high school experience. I just hung out with my friend Marla mm. the other day, and she and I just became friends in the last like few years. She's a new like friend. Um, she'd never seen the show, and we were hanging out, and she's like, "I watched the first season of your show," and I was like, "You weirdo! Why would you do that?" <laughs> uh, she's like, "Cause I." I feel like it's you, right? Like, are you Peyton? Was were you Peyton in high school? Was that real? And it was. All the questions about like sexuality and place and gender and like what do I do with myself? Like, mm. all of that was my experience. And so I don't think it was ahead of its time, but it was timely. Mm. That's cool. Yeah, I don't know. The only thing I could think of is just Haley being a pregnant girl in high school that nobody shamed for being pregnant in high school. Right, right. I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. In fact, we all like threw baby showers and it was kind of fun. I know, I know, totally. It's like, okay, I guess that's, that's a nice world to imagine. Do any teachers ever stop Haley and be like, oh my God, are you okay? No, never. <laughs> that's wild. All right. It's really wild yeah. that everyone just acts like it's totally normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. well, it's because she was married that made it okay. So suddenly everybody, well, <laughs> you know, it's another. That's the conversation for another day. But she's bona fide. What's that yeah. line from Oh Brother We're Out Now? He's bona fide. Yeah, Haley was yeah, bona fide. But whatever. Regardless, it does seem like a that that's a nice world to dream of, where a girl could make whatever choice she wanted and not get shamed for it either way, and yeah. just be supported. That would be nice. If only poor um, Rachel had had that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a review. 
You can also follow us on Instagram at dramaqueensoth. Or email us at dramaqueens at iheartradio.com. See you next time. We're all about that high school drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl, cheering for the right team.